All right, welcome back to Study Ball. Let's continue our series on the 2021 draftable quarterbacks going into the NFL. Number five on my list, I had Trey Lance. And this is where it gets tricky as we start to move up because I believe two, three, and four could be interchangeable depending on how you view things and how you look or what lens you look through. So I'm always going to say that I'm always looking through a processing lens first. I want to see guys that can process information because I believe that translates to the next level. I'm not all into the athletic part of it uh, in terms of how fast they can run and whether they can be a zone read type guy because that's not my area of expertise. So a lot of my rankings just go based off of how I see the game, a lot of times biased towards how I played the game. And so I have no problem if you put two, three, and four in different orders because I can completely understand it depending on how you're breaking things down. But number four for me, I'm gonna put Justin Fields here. And as I said, I could easily see Justin Fields at number two because he does some things really, really well that could warrant him being up there. There's just times with some of the processing things that I'd like to see him get a little better in that area. So I've placed him at number four on my list. Let's take a look at the film. All right, so with Justin Fields, we know he's got tremendous athletic ability just like Trey Lance and played at an extremely high level, uh, played huge in some big games and you'll see some great stuff from a processing standpoint. So even though I say I'd like to see him do better processing things, that doesn't mean he doesn't process, hasn't processed, and hasn't done some good things. Just means there's an inconsistency there that worries me a little bit uh, when a guy goes to the next level, uh, when, I'm, when I'm looking at, at ranking different guys, because I believe that's something that truly can translate. So here's a play that, that we call Hank. So it's just a curl on the outside, flats, and then the inside guy runs a hook route. A lot of guys are taught to read this inside out. I always like to read it outside in, but you know, it is what it is. You're coached to do what you're coached to do. So the first thing is we're gonna see free pressure coming to the outside. One reason why I like to read outside first because our hots usually come from the outside. And if that was the case, we're probably putting this ball on the flat right now. But instead, we're throwing it back inside where the pressure's not coming from, or at least we're reading there first. But with all that being said, and a hot situation, Justin does a great job right here of looking in here at the hook, and then off of the hook, we're always supposed to read the squeeze. If I get a squeeze from the front side, then I push my read out the front side. If I would get a squeeze from the back side, now I would push my read out the back side. So here, he gets the squeeze from the front side, does a great job of working straight out to his right-hand side, to the strong side. And we'll see, right, as he works to the outside, the safety goes past the curl to jump the flat. Still could have hit the flat, but with a guy barreling down on him, processes and makes the good throw and the good read and decision to the curl route right there. Really, really well done off the inside squeeze. As I said, I would just want to read this outside in, so I'm looking at this guy, boom, ball's right here. I'm reading this curl flat right now. That guy jumps hard, I can still hit the curl, but then I recover into the shorter one right here is how I like to do it. Looks like he's taught the other way and does a great job of processing this and getting through it to the right guy. Okay, we're gonna take another look at same play. We're gonna run Hank once again. Got the hook in here, we got the curl, we've got the flat. This time, does a great job once again. He's peeking inside, and we wanna hit the curl on one hitch. See it right there. Pick it up, put it down, and get the curl out of there. Good timing on this. Feels the squeeze, sees the turn right here, gets his eyes to this guy, this guy eyes the flat. Nice job putting that right on the curl right behind him, like this kind of stuff. Processing this kind of stuff, did a really good job, and I like the timing and the location of the throw. All right, we've got a little bit of uh, kind of like a smash concept, a little hook here, little corner up over the top. We've got a dig on the other side here coming through here and then the back trying to get out underneath it. So really could have gone either direction here, but he sees the press up top to the big guy as his big guy starts to come inside, 
feels the squeeze and a couple quick steps there by the corner, which is all we need. A couple quick steps by the corner to engage on that pivot route up there. Boom, put the ball up over top. Nice ball, good velocity, gets it up over the corner. It's a big part of playing this position at the next level is can you get the ball up and down? Can you get it out on time and can you get it up and down? This corner starting to fall off. Nope, get the ball up and down with enough velocity. Good read, good throw. Nice completion there on the sideline, both feet down. So timing that works at the NFL level as well. So another good job processing, knowing what he's supposed to see, getting his eyes on the right guy and making quick decisions, accurate throws off of that. All right, so we've got a quick double post combination. So it's this guy running this influence here, other tight end uh, running this uh, other post on the outside. Going to get a guy going down the outside and then the shallow coming across. So where you always start, you're always going to read high to low once you don't have a hot this guy were to come right here, he would probably have a hot to his back in that situation. It could pop it there, but that double post, we're going to read the inside safety here. This guy goes through there, inside safety takes him. We're going to hit the outside safe or hit the outside post. If this inside safety drops back, now we're going to think inside post. Then if that guy chases him, we're going to replace that with the shallow. So that's how this read plays out. So let's watch that safety as we run this thing right there. What's he do? Even though he hasn't chased a long way, he has turned his hips to the inside. Can't really play anything outside of him. Sees that turn of the hips. Now I'm going to put this post on the outside guy. And you'll see right here, great throw in between bodies. See the velocity, see the accuracy. Now, just as a little note, what we like to do down here when we get a double post look, and these safeties are staying tight here, instead of having to drive this in between these two defenders, just lay the ball up and over the safety to the back. He's already got his hips turned. He's not going to be able to turn and make this play, but keep it out of harm's way and lay it up and over to the back uh, end line where only your guy can get it, shielding him from the outside defender. But nonetheless, great throw. Good timing, gets that safety turned, boom. Great throw in there, but I'd love to see him let this go. Just lay it up over the top, let his tight end run and get it. And you see, this is what a lot of guys do down here too. So not just the safety here, but watch this corner. This corner down here knows that you don't have a lot of space. So they like to try to undercut this here and make this play. Another reason why we love to throw it into the back of the end zone because throw it over that safety, don't let him turn and get back involved. But the corner, if they're going to try to undercut it down here in the red zone, we lay it over so that guy can't make a play on the football either. But perfect throw, beats really good defense, and that's exactly what Justin Fields does right here. All right, really like what he does here off the play fake. He's got basically an inside fade here and a post there. So by all means, when you've got a middle field safety uh, situation here. So he's got one guy in the middle. He's really just trying to work that safety right there. That safety works towards the post. He's got a chance to lay it out here. If he gets that safety to hold back to the inside fade, now he can take a shot at the post up over the top. So really just trying to work that free safety right there. Holds him with the fake, peeks his eyes, gets him to turn this direction. So now he's coming back and reading this relationship. Outside backer covers the hitch. Now he's got an outside corner that's trying to run with this inside fade. And you see it, a great ball up and over in that position. The only thing I would say is if you can see this relationship and know that a corner's fallen off to cover this, maybe just keep this a little bit further inside. Don't throw it to where the corner is, but landmarks can all change. Inside fades are usually tighter than a normal fade. So just up inside the numbers to keep it away from that corner. But nonetheless, his guy runs past the corner, no problem. But he just got to make that slight adjustment um, where he catches it going down. But nonetheless, still good read, good job working the free safety and a good ball to lay it out there and get another big throw 
down the field. All right, processing, right? Love processing. I know people have said, oh, he doesn't process well. And there's times where I question what he's thinking and what he's processing. But there's other times where you go, man, this is about as good as it gets. He's got that same hitch to the outside here. He's got the inside fade, basically what he had before. Now we see the free safety go in that direction. He's got a deep over coming to this side. And then he's got his swing out the backside. So he's trying to read over to the left side first. So he's looking at his hitch. Hitch is taken away here. Looking at his inside fade, doesn't like free safety in this corner's getting up over the top. Gets over to this over that's coming here. Got a guy sitting there for the over and he processes all the way back, all the way back to the back side, and gets to a swing route. I mean, that, that's the kind of stuff that you love to see. The ability to process things, process things quickly. Hitch is off, I get a buzz. Inside fade is off because I don't like the relationship with the corner. Looking at the over, this guy's sitting in the hole. Boom, back to my swing. Good, accurate throw to a swing on the backside. And here we are hitting a check down at the line of scrimmage. But because he processed it well and because he made an accurate throw, we get about a 30-yard gain on this play on a check down. That is really, really well done. You can't do it much better than that. All right, this is something else that I love. Okay, when you go back to QB Confidential, if you're a part of QB Confidential, number two session of Blackboard Breakdowns, we talk about recognition. We talk about the 10 zones on the field and understanding where the zones are and even more than understanding coverage, understanding where the defense isn't, right? Where they ain't. Throw it where they ain't. We always say that. So here's a great look right here of Clemson coming up, bringing pressure here in the A-gap. This safety, for some reason, dropping down to the weak side where there's already a backer. This guy's coming out, this guy's coming out, and nobody is in this hole right here. Now, I would expect somebody to move over into that hole if they were going to bring some kind of a zone dog, but they don't. They screw it up in this situation, right? Because you've got, look, you got a guy falling off, you got this guy here, you got this guy here. That can't be right. They've got one receiver over here and three defenders over there. But hey, they ain't right. Great, let's take advantage of it. Justin does a great job seeing that guy there, seeing this guy outside, understanding they're bringing pressure and there's nobody in this hole. Watch how he's going to hit this quick throw. Great recognition right here by Justin Booth. Put your foot in the ground, get the ball out. This is normally thrown farther over here by the numbers as you work this double seam off of the free safety. But hey, if they're going to avoid it right here, I'm going to recognize that. I'm going to get the ball out quick. I'm going to beat them with that throw and we're going to get ourselves a big play. So I love the recognition right there that, hey, the defense screwed it up. Let me take advantage of that screw up and find the window in there and get myself a chunk play. All right. Ability to make different kinds of throws. Accuracy. Placement of the football. He's got the inside fade once again. Little hitch locked up here. Now he's got the inside fade. Don't like this relationship. Most times I'm not even gonna throw an inside fade when the defender's eight yards off because it's almost impossible to get up on him and get past him on an inside fade. So in normal situations, I'm probably working to some of these guys that are running away on this side. But he felt like this defender was so soft that his guy couldn't get to him that he could beat him with the throw. Not a lot of guys can do this. This is what impresses you. This is why you can see him going all the way up to the number two spot on anybody's list, and I'm not going to argue with you because my two, three, and four are all in you know, their positions because of certain things that I like, but I also like a lot of things that Justin Fields does, and here's one of them. Look at this placement on the football. Talking a 30-yard throw with touch. It's what I call firm but soft. Firm but soft. Doesn't take a long time to get there. It's not hanging in the air but it's still soft enough that his receiver can see it, make the adjustment, make the catch, and get the touchdown. You just can't throw it any better than that. Actually, I guess they called him out of bounds here, but man, what an unbelievable play, throw, everything right there based on understanding what he's seeing, soft defender, and then being able to make the right kind of throws, which I value very, very highly. Understanding how to make the right kind of throws, firm but soft, Great placement, 
Great throw there by Justin Fields. Here's another one. Okay, basically the exact same play that we just saw on that side. So they're going to run an inside fade. And now he's going to see that, hey, this guy's sitting outside of him. Tough for this guy to get around him, but he held the free safety in the middle of the field, made sure that the free safety stayed there, looking at the free safety. Now he comes to it. And then just look at this throw. He understands that there's going to be contact. So something that a lot of guys can't do. There's contact right there at the top of the route, right as I'm about ready to throw this football. Most guys are going to launch this incomplete every single time. Why? Because that guy's in that position. He's in trouble right there if he throws this thing and they get contact. We're going to incomplete pass every single time. But he recognizes that, recognizes where that contact is coming. Let's this ball go with air, allows for the contact to happen, plays for the contact, unbelievable throw right there. Great touch, drops it over the top, understands what he's seeing. Just a great throw right there. All right, we talk about the ability to throw firm but soft. Get it up and down, get it up and over defenders. Love this right here. Got a defender that's coming, going over in this area, right? We're only talking about a 20 yard throw right here. This guy sitting right in between us ends up getting about 12 yards deep. Look at the ability to go up and down, to get the ball up and over. No problem, finish the throw, drop it right on your receiver. Really, really well done and the different kinds of throws the things that I love about Justin Fields um, and, and what really makes him a special player at the college level and what obviously could be a special player at the NFL level. Got to have the ability to do this, right? Work the pocket and make big time throws. Work the pocket and make big time throws. Step up, stay balanced, boom, get up in there. Love that. Doesn't panic, doesn't take off running. Feels the pressure, knows what's coming, eyes are down the field. And that's a big part of this, is you got to see and understand what's coming. Go route here, deep over there. Feels like there's a huge void right here, so he knows there's a chance for it to come. So instead of panicking and take off and run, let me just step up around this, be ready to make the throw. Step up, stay balanced. Can't get everything into it, still got a strong enough arm job by the receiver to cut that off, but a money throw at the second level around pressure. You're going to live in that world if you're playing in the NFL. It's really well done once again by Justin Fields. Love this. Okay, we're going to come out, play action right here. Okay, safety down, kind of messing around, safety in the middle of the field. Looks like he's going to play middle field safety on the snap. He's going to take off running this direction. We've got a play action right here off of the play action, the eyes. It's the eyes of the quarterback. See it. See this guy cross over and turn this direction. I'm going to come back to my inside guy instead of my outside guy. Nice read here and great throw. Once again, up and over, touch, touch. Ability to throw it firm but soft, get it up and over the defender, and lay it on your receiver. Now, it's one thing we could say, oh, why don't you just lay it up farther and, and lay it out here? Well, you also got to know what's going on on the backside, and this is a tough thing to do. He made a play fake. If you remember, right, he's coming back and making a play fake, and on the play fake, He's reading what's going on. This safety could be going back because this guy shows almost like he's running to two. So it's hard to make a play fake, verify this safety, make a read and get back to this one. So you always want to try to keep your guy on the front side of the football field so the backside guy can't come into play. That's why this ball is a little more firm and soft right down the middle of the field. Don't let that backside guy get involved and let's go get ourselves another big play in this situation. I like this one right here. Okay, we're running a seven stop right here, getting a flat out here, and then we're gonna run the high pylon. So, as we come out to read this, 
who are eyes on. Know where your eyes should be. Okay, we're making sure that this safety is not in a position to cover either one of them. So now my eyes go to this corner. This corner stays high. I'll read my stop to my flat. This corner jumps it. That's where I get the big shot up over the top. So here you see again, nice read once again. They end up missing this throw. A little bit too flat on the throw. Overstrides it a little bit. I would like to see that air on this football. Lay it up to that front pylon and go get yourself a touchdown. But more importantly, it's about the processing. What am I looking at? See this corner right here. This corner right here flattens his feet right there. I've got great speed. Doesn't matter. Makes a great read. Just a little bit more touch on this throw and they get themselves a touchdown. I've seen him use that touch numerous times, but I like the read. I like the process, knowing where your eyes need to go and the kind of throws that you need to make. He does a good job with that. This one just a little bit too long, but more because it was just too flat, but so many things to like about what Justin Fields does. All right, so there's part one of Justin Fields. You see it, there are so many things to like about Justin Fields. Got the ability, right? He's got the understanding of how to make different kinds of throws, which is something that I love. There's times where he just does a great job of processing information. So that's part one. I can see why people can fall in love with him and why he could go all the way up at the number two spot. We'll do part two uh, coming up and we'll take a look at some of the processing that he seemed to struggle with a little bit and just the inconsistencies. You have inconsistencies like that. You start to wonder, okay, who is this guy going to be at the next level? But man, if you get this at the next level, you are going to get a big time playmaker in Justin Fields.